Hey YouTubers, it's Tony here from We Try Anything. Channel is Try Anything, so you don't have to. Today's video is a tutorial video on the Casio GWM5610U, which has a module number of 3495. In this video, what we'll do, we'll go around the watch and we'll show you how to use this very watch. So the first thing to talk about is the buttons on the side. So what you have, you have two buttons either side of this digital watch. And in this aspect, what you've got is the top left hand corner, which if you keep it pressed for a couple of seconds, allows you to adjust certain parameters of the watch, depending on the mode you're in. Bottom left allows you to flick through the modes of the, that this watch has. And this watch does have a fair few modes. To the top right hand corner, which I shall show you in a bit, is you can activate the light from the main timekeeping mode. And down to the bottom right hand corner is how you adjust certain elements. Plus, if you keep your finger on it, it'll allow you to receive the time. But I'll show that you that again in a little while. So the next thing to talk about will be that the digital display. Now the digital display, what you can see here, it is made up of a fair few components. You've got text, you've got lettering, numbers, and then obviously you've got the numbers there. Now starting from the top left hand side, what you've got there is the letters that say RC, VD, and PS. Now what it means is, is that it has synchronized with the atomic clock. If you've got an atomic clock in your country or like an atomic clock tower, it has received the time from that tower now if you haven't got it in a certain country so it's available in countries such as Japan China Europe the UK and the USA but if you if you live or reside in a country that hasn't got that feature then that won't be highlighted now underneath that you've got what is known as power saving mode now you can turn that and turn that off and on as you so wish but what that allows this watch to do if it's in darkness or if it's in a drawer or in a box somewhere and it hasn't been used and it hasn't detected any sunlight for a while then this watch will switch off it'll still keep the time but the actual display will turn off so that's what that ps stands for then obviously you've got the usual parameters you've got like p there just listed there for pm because we're in the 12 hour format that you can see here and above that you've got what is we now that stands for what would be the day within the week so in this instance it is wednesday what we have here is the date within the month and then we have the month itself now that may appear differently on your watch depending on which part of the world you're in because you can adjust the day and the month kind of switch them around if you so wish so this is what we would see in the UK where you've got the date and then the month but in your part of the world it may be the month and the date so just bear that in mind that's what that's for but that also hosts a few other areas so for example in real time it'll show you which real time you're looking at um, stopwatch it'll, um, I believe in timer it'll show you the uh, local time etc so that does have a few little uses and then underneath obviously you've got what would be the hour the minute and the second and then following that, just down to the bottom, you have the alarm indicators on the left. So you've got snooze, you've got alarm, and you've got signal. So the snooze is obviously if the snooze alarm's activated. The next one too is if the not, you know, the, the one of the other four alarms are activated, or if you have the hourly signal activated. Now to the right, you've got L, M, and H, and currently there's a little indicator above H. Now this watch is solar paneled, and you can see that by the solar array just in on the inner part of the dial, or what would be the digital display as it were. Now this indicates that charge within the battery is at high. Now if it goes to medium or low, then obviously what will start to happen is that the watch will start to lose certain functions because it's keeping the power to tell the things like the time etc so if you can keep this watch out in sunlight as much as you can or if you wear it on your wrist and just keep it exposed to sunlight then obviously it will help that battery get to the high point that is indicated here and those are the buttons and the display on this Casio digital watch now the next thing I'm going to show you how to operate is how to adjust certain parameters of this watch and that will include the date and time and things like the illumination duration etc but what I'm going to show you first is the top right hand corner here where you can illuminate the digital display now you can see towards the left here I'll just put it back here you can see to the left as I'm pressing that button you've got a one and a half second duration here and the LED white light or the white LED to the left of the display just there. Now if I move this watch over you can see that I'm showing you what would be the illumination within darkness and semi-darkness and as I say you, it is a one and a half illumination duration 
at the minute, but that can be extended to three second illumination duration, which I shall show you in a minute. But that's the illumination, and that's how to activate it to the top right hand corner. Now, the other thing this watch will do, and I'll just quickly show you before I start showing you the adjustments, is that you can turn on what is known as auto light. And that is easily done, again, by pressing the illumination button to the top right hand corner in timekeeping mode. And if you just keep it down for a couple of seconds, what you'll see is the letters LT appear just above the second. So if I move the watch in just a touch and just keep the finger pressed down for a couple of seconds, there you go, LT. Now what that means, and I'm just showing you on this little video clip here, is that as you rotate your wrist with the watch on, in theory, it should illuminate without pressing any buttons. Now, it doesn't do it all the time, but it does it for, I would say, 80 to 90% of the time, depending on the angle in which you rotate your wrist. Now, the other thing you have got to remember is that once the auto light is on, which is indicated by the LT, and you keep it on, there's a good chance it will deplete your battery more so than when the auto light is switched off. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it off again by again pressing that top right hand button and just keep my finger down for a couple of seconds and you'll see the LT disappear. And that's the auto light on this watch. Right, now what I'm going to show you how to do is how to set up the date and time and other parameters such as that. Now there is two ways of setting the date and time on this watch. Now the first way I'm going to show you is how to manually adjust it and then the second way I'm going to show you how to do it is how to get the watch to receive the time via the atomic clock towers that are situated here in the UK, in the USA, in Europe, Japan or China. Now if you don't live in a country that it features that option where you can where they have a atomic tower or clock tower within the country that you reside in then this will be the way in which you set your watch. Now what you do you press the top left hand corner of the watch the button there for a couple of seconds where it says hold and what you'll see is that it starts to flash. Now that HT there that's flashing away stands for your home time so this will be the main time that this watch is going to keep. So in this instance, I've got it set for London, but if you want to move it forward, so you want it to say Madrid or Paris, etc., then you can do that by pressing that button there while the HT is flashing. If you want to go backwards and you want to go back to say somewhere like London, then you can easily do that by pressing that top right hand button. Now, just to make you aware, because it caught me out a little, you need to set this even if you are receiving what would be the multiband six atomic clock signal etc because what i've noticed is if you don't what happens is and, and for example it's set on say somewhere where it was like in my case it was for madrid what happens is is that even though it does receive the time it will make your home time additional so for example if it is in madrid it's going to be a forward an hour or so or paris it's going to be forward an hour so it will do that and it'll always show you the wrong time now i it totally flummoxed me until i worked out that you need to set the home time first so just be aware of that factor now i'm going to move it on so i'm, I'm happy with my location is so with it being london so i'm going to move it on to what would be auto now that is for daylight saving time which this watch features so i've just put it on auto because obviously i received the time via the atomic clock but again you can just obviously you can turn it off you can turn the daylight saving time on so you can see the hour is going to buy one or you can just have it on auto which is what i normally have it on Right, the next thing to change will be the second. So if I press it one more time, what you'll notice is that it will say the seconds are flashing here. And if you press the bottom right hand button, the seconds will reset to zero. But if you press the button after where it says 30 seconds, it will add a value of one to the minutes. So that's what happens there. Now I'm going to move it along and I'll, you can do the same with the hours by pressing what will be up or down. You can do the same with the minutes here, which you can just do up and down. And then obviously you can do the same with the year and what would be the dates within the month and obviously the month within the year. So I just go, that's the month within the year and obviously the date within the month. Now you can change the 12 and 24 hours by again changing it here. So as you can see, it's gone to 1300 hours. But then if you want to change it again, you just press that button. You can go back to 1200 hours. And if you are in a PM scenario, it'll show the P, but obviously... If you've got it 24 hours, it'll be 1300, 1400, or known as military time in the USA. So put it, put it back. If you push it one more forward, you can see it says date and month. Now this can be changed month and then date within the month. And then obviously you can have it date and then month again. So if I just push it one more time, 
The next option is where you can change the language in which the day of the week is shown on this watch. So in this instance, it's English and you can change it to what would be uh, French, Spanish, Russian. I think it, it goes up to six languages and I'll just quickly cycle through them. As you can see here, that, and that's easily done. So you can go forward and obviously you can't go backwards on this one. So you can only go forward. So I'll just press it again and again. And then one more time to go back to English. And if you press it one more time, you can turn what would be the key beeps off and done. So in this instance, it's off. So you can see there's a little icon there with a note where it's been crossed out. And if you want to turn it back on, the key is shown there. So any beeps that you do, any button presses that you do press on this watch, it will beep. But I'll be honest with you, it is quite a quiet watch to say the least. Moving it along, now this is where you can change the light duration from what would be one and a half seconds to what would be three seconds. So again, press that button, that's three for the three seconds. And then the one is for one and a half second illumination duration. And then you see where it says here, receiving on or off. That means is if you turn it off, so obviously, as I've mentioned, if you're not in a country which has an atomic clock tower, which sends out signal to these sort of watches, which have got multiband six, if you, you might as well leave it off because there's no point. But if you are in a country that does receive these signals, then turning it on will allow the watch to update at about, I think about two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, it goes out and checks the time and then updates the time, depending on if there's any inaccuracies within the watch. So again, you can turn it off and then you can turn it on. And then the power save. So again, you can turn it off and then turn it on. And that will allow this watch to go into power save mode. So if you turn it off, it'll always be in full on, displays on all the features until the battery runs down. But if you turn it on, so the power save mode is on, then if you put it in a drawer somewhere or in a box, then the display will switch out if you can't detect any sun for a certain amount of time. Display, the display will turn off, so it will conserve the battery. So I've left it on, so obviously as I've shown you, just off and down. And I think that's it. So we're back to what would be the home time adjustments here for the countries in which you can change. So that's it. That's how to adjust this watch manually. But as I've mentioned, there is another way to adjust this watch. So if I if I press that button to come out of the adjustment phase, and that can happen in any part of the adjustment that you are looking to do on this watch. So just press the adjust button. So as you can see, it's gone back to Wednesday, the 15th of November. <music> As well as the manual way of adjusting the date and time, there is also the automatic way that this watch supports. Now to be able to do that, all you need to do is to make sure you're in the timekeeping mode and just keep your finger on the bottom right hand button. Now, what I'm gonna show you is just a quick video of it being sped up the process of the watch receiving the time. And the reason why, because where I'm positioning this watch just for this video, it, I, I've, I've, I've tried to do this earlier and it did take a fair amount of time because obviously the lighting and the cameras and stuff. So I'll just show you this clip of it being sped up and it accepting the time. It's finally received the time and as you can see you've got the RCVD there. It did take a fair amount of time plus I had to move this watch to what would be near a window sill just for it to speed up because what I found is it just depends on where your watch is how long it takes to receive the signal but if you can get it into a windowsill that's high up say in a bedroom or something it will receive it quite quick or in the kitchen or something but away from cameras and obviously what we've got here lighting and stuff where the signal may be interfered with so just bear that in mind now if you just want to see when the watch last received its signal you can just press on the bottom right hand button quickly and I'll just do it again properly. And you can see where it says it got that signal on the 15th of November at 1.45 p.m. So that'll give you an idea when it does receive the signal. Now it tends to happen between say two or three o'clock in the morning. So if you wake up in the morning, you wanna see what time you received the signal, you can just press that little button there, just press it once and it will tell you what time the watch has received the signal. So if I press the mode button to go back, let me just go back to the, what would be the timekeeping mode. And that's as easy as that. There is instructions to this watch listed below if there's anything I've missed, but in theory, that is how you receive the time on this watch.
Now the next mode I'm going to quickly show you by pressing the bottom left hand button which is for modes is world time. Now this watch will allow you to look up what would be 48 cities with 31 time zones in terms of world time and you can select your five favorites for this to happen. Now, as you can see here, I've got it on what would be world time, and if I start to cycle through the using the bottom right-hand button, the different times that I've got in my favorites, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and the last one being New York, and then going back to what would be the first one again, by again pressing that button there, you've got what's known as UTC, or otherwise known as Coordinated Universal Time. Now, if you want to change UTC to something else, or any one of the preferred world times that you've saved between one to five, if you are on world time and you're in one of your preferred times, you just press the top left-hand button for the adjustment, keep your finger down where it says hold, and then what you can then do, you can just go forward and, and backwards. So if I want to go forward, so Lisbon, London, obviously you'll start going Madrid and then Paris, etc. You can start cycling through the what would be the 30, 48 cities to choose the city in which you prefer to have as one of your favourites. So let's keep it as Paris here. So if I just want to press the adjust button at the top left hand corner just to stop that adjustment. And as you can see, now it is reflecting the time that is in Paris. So if I want to change, say, another uh, one of my favourites to number two, I just keep a finger on the top left-hand button. So I've got it selected on number two. So again, it's London. And I want to go backwards. So Lisbon, UTC. Let's go Rio, as in Rio de Janeiro. So if I was if I was communicating with someone over there or I was looking to travel over there, I can set it up for that. And if I again press the adjust button there just to stop it. And that's how you change it. So again, don't forget you can just change between the three that you've selected as your favorites. And then obviously if you go into a selected favorite and then press the adjust button to change it by doing that, you can easily do so. So again, just start flying through them. So let's keep it on Berlin. And there you go. That's the world time on the Casio GWM5610U. Right, the next mode I'm going to show you how to operate is the alarm mode on the Casio GWM5610. And if I just press the mode button once from what would be the world time, it will be take you onto the alarm mode. But if you do it from timekeeping mode, if I just pop it back to timekeeping mode, you just press it twice, just down the bottom left-hand corner, as you can see here. It's not the easiest thing to do, but as you can see, you're on the alarm mode. Now, with the alarm modes, you have four daily alarms. You also have a snooze alarm and an early signal. Now I won't go too much into the snooze alarm because it's just something I don't really use and if you want to find out more about it, the, there's a link in the description box below to the instructions of this watch. But what I'll just quickly show you is how to set a single daily alarm and I'll show you how to turn on the early signal. Now to activate any of the alarms in any of the numbers that you are looking at, if you just press the button once to the top left hand corner, you will see it says on. Now that means that alarm is now on and you can see there's a little indicator there down to the bottom left. So that indicates that there is an alarm on. If you want to turn it off, you just press it again and you can see that there's two dashes there indicating the alarm is not activated. If you want to set the alarm and also just remember that the alarm indicator is off. If you want to set the alarm, keep your finger on the button to the top left hand corner and you can see I'm adjusting an alarm. So I can easily go forwards or backwards in doing so. And it's as easy as that. If I want to change to minutes, I press the bottom left hand button. As you can see, now that goes to minutes. So that's going backwards and that's going forwards. And again, what you'll notice is as soon as you press the adjustment button for the alarms, the alarm indicator will activate, showing that the alarm is activated. So if I just want to turn the adjustment off, you just press the top left hand button. And then as you can see, the alarm is now set for 12 midnight and it is on. If I want to just turn it off, you can easily do so by the top left hand button. And as you can see, the alarm is off and the indicator is off. And that's how to set a daily alarm on this watch. To move along to what would be, say, for example, alarm two, as I've shown you, you just press that bottom right hand button. And again, alarm three, alarm four, snooze alarm, and then hourly signal. To activate the hourly signal so the watch will beep on the hour every hour, you make sure you're on the screen and then you press the top left hand button to turn the alias signal on. And what you'll notice again, it says SIG, which stands for the signal is activated. If you want to turn it off, again, press the top left hand button. And again, the same would be, so if I turn on an alarm and then if I turn on the snooze, which I can set, which I would imagine is as you would do in the alarm, 
and then if I turn on what would be the hourly signal as you can see all of them are activated so you've got the hourly signal the alarm one of the alarms and the snooze alarm on and again just to turn it off press the top left hand button depending on which of the alarms you are on so that's on and then make sure there's no other alarms on and then the snooze alarm is off and that's it all the alarms are off and that's how you operate in a very quick way how to operate the alarms on this digital watch so the next mode I'm going to show you is the stopwatch mode now as you can see there to the top right hand corner you've got two and that indicates it's now two o'clock in the afternoon so that is your local time the ST is stopwatch now this watch will measure up to what will be 24 hours and it also measures the seconds up to a hundredth of a second and the way it displays it is that that's the hours there to the left hand side the middle one's the minutes and the one on the right hand side is the seconds as well as an elapsed time it'll also measure split times and first and second times so if i want to start the stopwatch i press the bottom right hand button and as you can see there the hundredths of a second are flowing away and as are the seconds if i want to stop it i press it again and then if i want to reset the stopwatch I press it to the top left hand button there if I'm going to do a split time or I want to see a split time so if the race is started so I press the start button there just down the bottom right hand corner and I want to see a split time so if someone runs through a first lap as it were and they're still running the race you just press the top left hand button and as you can see it says SPL and that is the split time but what you'll see is the uh, what will be the apostrophes they are blinking away and that indicates that the stopwatch is still measuring elapsed time if I release the split I can do so and as you can see the time's jumped up because it is still measuring that elapsed time and then if I want to press it to stop and then that's to reset the stopwatch now the final thing you can do with the stopwatch is what would be record first and second place finishes so in this case what you do the first your two runners are going to are started in the race so obviously the stopwatch is started so they're running now if the first one gets through the finish time in a super quick time of a what would be up to 10 seconds etc and they're just running through the finish line as soon as you go through the finish line press the top left hand button for what would be the split time and just keep the elapsed time running and then when the second person runs through the finish line you press the bottom right hand button to stop the stopwatch and then you want to see their finish time so that first split time is the first runner's finish time but you want to see the second runner's finish time you just press the split again and that will be the second runner's finish time. And that is how to do first and second place finishes on this Casio digital watch. So what I'm going to do is just quickly reset it and that's the stopwatch ended. Now the next mode to talk about will be the timer mode on this watch. Right, this is a countdown timer screen. Now this can be accessed again from what would be the timekeeping mode by pressing the mode button a couple of times, getting through the stopwatch and then to the countdown timer. Now this timer will count down from 24 hours in increments of one second. And it's, you can easily operate the timer by, if you've got to say, for example, it's currently set on 10 minutes, just press the start button. And as you can see there, it's starting to count down in increments of a second. If you want to pause it at any given time, just press that button there. And that's the timer pause. If you want to re resume the timer, just press it one more time. And then if you want to stop it and reset it, you can easily do so by pressing the stop button and then pressing the reset button. If you want to set the timer within the 24 hour period, you just keep your finger on the top left hand button, which is the adjust button here. And as you can see, you can start to adjust the countdown timer as you so wish. So again, I mean, I want to go say backwards like 23 hours and what would be 10 minutes. So 23 hours, let's go 15 minutes. So let's plus or you can minus if you go over. So let's go to plus, so 15 minutes. And then I can adjust the seconds as well. So if I wanted 10, just 10 seconds indication of time, just there, and then I let go. And then if I just press the start, as you can see, it's starting to count down from the time that I've set. So you can adjust the hours, the minutes, and the seconds as well, if you so wish. So if I wanna stop that and then reset it back to the time that I've set it to, you can easily do so by pressing that to stop the countdown timer and then pressing the top left hand button to reset it to what you've set the timer to be at. And then finally, just to quickly reiterate what I did, I just pressed the top left hand button to, I just held it down and that allows me to adjust the time. So if I want to go back to what would be 10 minutes that the timer was set at, 
So you up or down, so you can go up in value or down in value, and then press the mode button to move it along. So I want to go back to what would be 10 minutes by pressing the top right hand button, and then again pressing the button again to go backwards and get it back to 10 minutes. And that's it, and just press that top left hand button to stop the adjustment, and that's it, and that's the timer. It's as simple and as easy as that. And that's it for this watch. The, the only other thing to take into consideration is what would be the solar panels. And that you can just leave your watch on the windowsill or anything like that to keep the battery charged up. Or when it's on your wrist, just make sure that your watch is exposed in sunlight so it gets a good adequate charge. And as I say, that's it. Now there is instructions to this watch if there's anything I've missed. And if this video is any use to you, then please click on the thumbs up icon. It really does help the channel. If you want to see more videos coming soon from the We Try Anything channel, on watches and stuff like that, then please click on the subscription button below. And again, I hope this video was of some help to you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.